But right now, I'd like to go to Diana Batista from Conejo Valley Adult School, who's going to tell her about tell us about her high flex caregiver training. Thank you, Diana, for uh, being on with us today. I also have a teacher who just joined us, Christiane oh. Galvo, and okay. she has been working um, with. She's the ESL teacher that's been working with the CTE teacher. Am I able to share my screen, Lori? Yeah, let me let me just uh, give you co-host. Uh, uh, things here. And yes, I will stop sharing and you go ahead and share. Thank you. And um, Thank while you. I'm doing that, we just really just got started this year. I think I'm going to talk about that a little bit. Um, so we're, you know, we're still working out the little bumps and bruises and whatnot. So um, don't hesitate if you have some questions, you know, I don't mind. Or suggestions, I should say questions or suggestions. So um, this is a little bit of the agenda. Lori asked me to see if we could talk about some of these things, and I'm not going to read all the slides to you. These are the typical things that we talk about when we're talking about career pathways and integrated education training programs. And uh, the hardest part for us is always getting the teacher time together and working on that single set of objectives and then developing the assessment. But I, th I think we worked it out pretty well. So you can see here, I'm going to show about our pathway, the co-op content, some of our successes, and so forth. So in our medical pathway, we're using an alternate teaching model, and we actually started with three teachers total. And then um, we're hoping to expand the pathway that could include other courses. And currently, um, the medical coordinator and my lead English as a second language instructor and myself are attending the integrated education training implementation clinic through CalPRO. So each session that we have, I'm not sure if some people here maybe have already completed that, but each session that we attend, they give us um, new information and some homework assignments. So we're really coming up with good ideas of how to improve our program. And so these are the medical courses that we currently have, and we're looking at examining each one of them to see how we can expand our medical pathway to include English language learners in these other areas. So we did just start um, towards the end of April, a physical therapy aid course as well. And in the physical therapy aid course, um, that is the person who would be the assistant to the physical therapist. And so I can talk a little bit more about that as we get through the slides. We're looking at possibly breaking down a medical terminology course, maybe doing it, it was suggested that we try to do it as medical terminology A and medical terminology B, instead of it being a one semester class, let it be two semesters, one year, to kind of go through the language process um, nice and, and slow, because there's a lot of uh, difficult words to pronounce, even for um, English speakers. So um, recruitment, what we did was we had the ESL teachers talk a little bit about that we were going to expand. And I went to the ESL classes saying that we were gonna expand opportunities for them so that they would be able to learn new skills while they were currently learning their language skills. And then we had the uh, caregiver teacher come to the class and talk a little bit about what they would learn. And this is the flyer that we used. So we posted on the wall after we did the presentation. And this showed them a long list of different things that they would be learning if they signed up for the caregiver class. This class is also advertised on the website. And it's um, open to all students, but we also target English as a second language learners. So the co-op that we selected is 71.3, and that's the one that says um, in language and literacy to get the skills necessary to effectively participate in workforce training and work as a healthcare worker. And you can see there, then it has very generic um, terms there, describing symptoms of an illness, performing actions, and responding to a supervisor's questions, completing a health history form, and then also scheduling an appointment. So the assessment tasks are a little bit more specific. And um, I could let Christiane talk a little bit about the assessment. If, Christiane, if you want to unmute and okay. talk about how you actually deliver the assessment. All right. So first of all, thank you for the opportunity. And uh, good afternoon to everyone. It's a pleasure to be here to share. So yeah, so um, Jennifer and I, Jennifer is the caregiver teacher, uh, caregiver instructor, and I am the ESL teacher. So we got together 
and we took a look at the all the documents that we had available for task 71.3. Um, and so we, um, based on that document, we created the, the assessment and the assessment uh, is divided into three tasks. So mainly task one uh, is a role play where the students interact with the teacher, but the student is the, care, um, is the caregiver and the teacher uh, is the patient or the, the, the assistant and the teacher calls um, the doctor to make an appointment. So the student answers the call. So it's an oral uh, communication it's for, for developing oral communication skills. Uh, task two is mainly a reading and writing activity where the students have to read this health history form and uh, answer questions based on the paragraph that they have. And uh, this is an opportunity for them to not only practice um, the, the language, but also to interact with each other. So we usually do the practice, uh, the role plays, the students have the opportunity to interact with the teacher and also with one another in the classroom. Uh, and then task three, the students um, take directions from a, um, from a healthcare supervisor and they role play with the teacher. And in that case, it's me, the teacher, the ESL teacher, so they role play with the teacher and or with Jennifer, the caregiver instructor. So they role play with us only, um, it, and it's mainly focused on, commu on oral communication too. So they, they, they can create something based on what they see or they can use uh, the, the, um, the prompts that we give them to, give the, the, to make the questions. And uh, this is a really good, good opportunity for them to check what they have learned in caregiver classes and also to practice their English. And uh, they are usually students who are at uh, level four and they're going or advanced students. So they usually do really well. They like this um, interaction and it's also fun having this opportunity. It's not only an assessment we take as an, a learning opportunity for everybody. So, thank you. I think the next slide might be yours. I'm not sure. Let's see. Oh, no. So, um, another thing. So, we ran a short class from October till December in last semester. And then we did a survey with the students so that we're planning what we could do in spring and then also in summer. And so, we were asking the students if they could attend day or night. Uh, would they attend in summer, fall, or spring? Would they be willing to attend an accelerated course, which is one of the things that we did, four days a week up to three hours a day, or do they prefer the longer eight to 10 hour weeks with three hour class twice a week? And uh, we've run them um, both, both ways in spring, and um, the students still have to continue, as you all know, in their English as a second language class, and then we did the add-on of the language support class. So when we were getting started, um, I met with Christiane and we reviewed the co-app and we talked about some of the things that I know that the caregiver course covered. I think we previewed the textbook and then we set up a meeting with the CTE instructor and I met with the medical coordinator. We looked at the course outline, we looked at some of the things in the textbook and Christiane and Jennifer were able to review the PowerPoints that Jennifer planned to use. And then Christiane actually observed um, some of Jennifer's teaching. Did you want to talk a little more about that? Yes. So it was really important for me to observe her classes because then I knew how she was uh, approaching, how she was teaching the students, especially the vocabulary. Uh, because since I'm a language teacher, but I'm not in the, I'm not a technical instructor, it was really important for me to have that um, opportunity. So I could take a look at her material and I also uh, prepared material based on what she had. And also I always use uh, what the students bring. So their questions, whatever they, they have, they bring with them uh, to, the, to the class. So uh, it was great because she shared with me the, the PowerPoint, all the lessons she would be teaching. And that way I could outline what I would be doing during the semester. 
And so for this um, single set of learning objectives, I should say that the caregiver teacher had a textbook and then we also use Burlington English. And so this is just an example. I'm not gonna read the slide to you, but you can see the big part is that we were teaching them the appropriate vocabulary to communicate with all of the different people they would need to interact with. They would have to have the writing skills to complete medical history and medications, and also to document properly take vital signs and then also document the patient status and concerns. And that's where that assessment piece where they got to interact with the supervisor was really useful because they would tell the supervisor, you know, oh, the, the patient didn't take their medication or something. And then the supervisor would ask them some kind of a follow-up clarifying question and they had to actually have like four interactions. So it was really authentic to the workplace. Okay, and then um, Christiane put together some thoughts about pro participating in this program. Yeah, so Jennifer and I started working in October and Julie was also teaching some of the, right? We had some two groups for uh, ESL for caregivers. And so we started in October, 2021 and we're still working together. And the collaboration has worked really well. We usually get together to plan, to share materials and the assessment we do together. So that way um, we help each other with the preparation, also making sure that the students are prepared in both uh, courses in English, in ESL and in her caregiver in, uh, class. Uh, so as I said before, um, Jennifer, the caregiver instructor, she shared her PowerPoint presentation with me, which was fundamental. So I had an idea of what she was teaching during the entire semester. Uh, so as for the ESL classes, I meet with the students once a week and I use Burlington. So I use Burlington as a guide because um, I, I also like the role play and the vocabulary. But the thing about uh, the, the most important thing is that it's English for specific careers and the course really matched what we really, uh, we wanted to, to prepare for, to prepare the students for the assessments too. Also, um, the teacher, uh, help, I help them with pronunciation of technical words and expressions and any other vocabulary that they bring. Um, and I use, I use the, the vocabulary part of Burlington as um, we do games, we do, um, we, we, do a mem we play memory games. And the only thing that the students have been complaining and I also uh, don't like much about Burlington is the lack of visual resources. So we don't have, uh, you know, uh, for the vocabulary, there is the translation, but there is no definition for the, the words. So, and also we need to find more material. Like I'm, we're planning on working together in the future. Jennifer and I, we want to prepare some flashcards, glossaries, dictionaries, things like, I mean, find some dictionaries, not prepare the dictionaries, but find some dictionaries to work. And so we want to prepare a more visual material where the students can have copies or they can access somewhere. And we thought about building a Canvas page where the students will uh, have access to the flashcards. And also I will create, I was thinking this morning about creating some Kahoot and bring something more collaborative to the class. So um, this is really great. I really like working at, with uh, the caregiver instructor because it's a learning process all the time and also we see the students improvement and how they participate in both classes. And I really like this interdisciplinary part of our work. Thank you. There have been a couple of questions in the chat about the textbook. So the textbook that we were using, I don't have the exact title, but I'll look for it and get it to Lori. Um, it was specific to caregiver, which is a little bit different than what Lori was talking about earlier with USA Learns, which is more of a nursing assistant because there's difference between what you can do as a caregiver and so forth. And I see Sigrun's comment about Quizlet. Okay, we'll take a look at that. But I recently found at the CoAB conference, Pearson has a new um, series that I'm looking into and I don't remember the exact title of it. I lent it to the caregiver teacher. It's um, something career view. 
career view for health occupations. And it does have some of the visual things that, um, that Christiane look, was looking at. So I wanna get more information about that. So that should help. So the section um, that Christiane was using mostly in Burlington, for those of you that use Burlington, was not under health sciences, it's under human services. And you can see there's a couple of different sections there for caregivers, applying for a job, assisted living, meeting the family, family caregiver communication, skilled nursing facilities, first aid, in-home care, and working with children with disabilities. So um, again, there was a lot of student lessons there that um, Christiane was able to build upon. And it was a lot of like role play, pronunciation language things. So some of the challenges that we had was the time commitment that we asked the students for. At the beginning, when we were telling them that they were signing up, the one class was four days a week, two and a half hours a day, in addition to a three hour ESL class twice a week. And everyone was so excited that they could finish and, and become a caregiver within five weeks. They really wanted to sign up, but then they started to realize how you know, busy they were gonna be. So the high flex option, which I know is what Lori really um, wanted us to emphasize, is that we gave the students the option to attend the um, caregiver lectures on Zoom. And some of them, many of them started that way at the beginning, but then as they saw the interactivity that was going on in the actual classroom, most of them decided to attend in person. All of the students had to attend certain Wednesdays when there were skills assessments. They had to get certified in CPR and first aid and a number of other skills for the, um, the actual caregiver certificate. But under the Zoom option, there was one parent who has three children and um, she felt like if, if she could be home, even though she has someone else to help her around the house, it was easier for her to be at home attending class, which she didn't have to be present in class. Uh, we had another student who by the time she got off of work, wouldn't be on time for class. And then, um, you know, it was just easier and she was on time and didn't miss any class time by attending those classes in Zoom. And then another student said that it was too many nights for her to be away four nights while she would be two nights in ESL class and two nights in caregiver class. So when she could, she would attend in Zoom. When the students attended in Zoom, um, the teacher would turn the laptop to the front row and students would rotate so that it would be different students each week interacting with the students on Zoom. So in other words, they would have a homework assignment or they would be practicing, um, you know, interacting with their supervisor, interacting with the patient's family. And this way they would interact with different people. So everyone in the class, whether they were on Zoom or if they were attending in the classroom, um, they still had the, the full experience of the class. Our future plans, there's a lot of information on the slide. Um, like I said, a lot of this is coming from the IET implementation clinic. What we really want to do before we sign students up is a recruitment orientation session to make sure they understand the time commitment and that we really mean it. You really have to attend the ESL class, the language support class, and also the caregiver class. The language support class through Burlington, you have a lot of extra time on your own where you can go in and do a lot of student activities to really bulk up those skills. And I know the students find that to be very beneficial. And Christiane has been really good about um, sending out lessons because when they're in Zoom, she shared with me that they can't record their own voice because they're practicing together like in breakout rooms or as a whole group. And then they repeat the same activity on their own in the student, student lessons on their own. Um, so we wanna look at some of the other academic support, make sure that we're enrolling students in the class that are serious about being able to have the skill level, whether it's language or other interest in the class setting the actual expectations of all the learners with goal setting, oh, talking about time management, asking them about what will they do if a barrier comes up. In other words, if their child is sick, what's their backup plan? Um, and then also incorporate more guest speakers and workplace skills into the lessons. We may actually have to add some hours to the class to accommodate all of this too. And then ideally we'd like to align with the college career pathway because I'm not sure if everyone is following up on the governor's budget, but it looks like that 130 million for adult ed and the health career pathways is, um, is continuing on. Uh, Marin's asking, do we have a syllabus that plans this out for the five weeks that links the three different classes they need to take? Um, I don't think we have a syllabus that was shared with students. The teachers kind of have a course outline and then they've been working on putting the pieces together. But I think I'll add that to our future plans. Thanks, Marin. 
And then we want to find out what other support services are available, available in the community. Um, some of the students got together and were kind of studying and practicing on their own. Like while they finished one class and they had to wait for the next. So we think we could incorporate some of that and give them a space where they can actually practice. And Diana, what about job placement? So we do have, um, Jennifer has connections with a lot of caregiver agencies. And so she's been able to refer our students and I believe they've done interview practice. And then the students have been getting hired. And it is an asset to be bilingual when you're working in caregiver in our community. So, so some of the secrets that we learned, I think many of us here already know this, the students will work so hard to, uh, to do what we'd like them to. They work really hard to achieve everything that they can. I attended the class and was asking, you know, what some of the feedback was from the class, as well as we've done um, class evaluations. And they really felt like both teachers really cared about them as becoming caregivers and um, kind of warned them about you have to make sure you take care of yourself, make sure you get enough sleep. They talked about resisting the urge when the, um, the family member or whoever it is is asking you to do additional things that are outside of the caregiver scope, such as heavy house cleaning. Um, like, you know, do your patient sleeping, that would be a good time for you to vacuum or something like that. So they were really, um, they felt strong about what they could say in those situations. Um, they learned about safety, like lifting and so forth. And they were really excited that they got CPR and first aid training and they actually got the cards that um, otherwise they wouldn't have had that experience. So the real reason we did this is to make sure that our ESL students feel successful and that they're learning relevant skills. Many of our students did get jobs but I'm still telling it, but here they are at graduation. These are five of our classes, all different students um, here at our school. You can see their happy faces. They were um, really excited to go through this program. And um, I think four of them also signed up for physical therapy aid as well as 12 other people. So we now have 16 people learning to assist physical therapists with client interaction. So we're really excited about that. So I have to look for the name of the textbook. I can maybe do it while Elisa's um, sharing her stuff, but if, if not, I'll get it for you later and send it to Lori to send out. Well, thank you so very much, Diana and Christiani is so great. And especially hearing about the collaboration, I think that's the, the key here, you know, to, to see how well the collaboration works. And when we put in the time for the collaboration and the planning and all of that, then, the program works well and the students succeed. So I really wanna emphasize that as, as one of the keystones of, of ILCE in California, that that really has to happen. It can't just be two separate classes with two teachers just doing their own thing. That's not what's going to help our students succeed as yours have done. So that's exciting. And we can't wait to uh, maybe next year have an even fuller uh, presentation from you that tells us all, all about what you're continuing to do. And we so appreciate you sharing with us.